After spending some time lost in the wilderness, the cloud stocks have finally started making a comeback in recent days, including today. But is the rebound sustainable? Consider the case of Kramer fave Adobe, the digital media titan. It's one of our cloud kings. After the close today, Adobe reported a terrific, solid top and bottom line beat. Unfortunately, the guidance was viewed as a little weak, and the stock ended up getting slammed in after hours trading. So is this a viable pullback, or do we need to be more cautious? Let's check in with Shantan and Orion. He's the chairman, president, and CEO of Adobe to get a better sense of the quarter and his company's prospects. Mr. Ryan, welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks for having me, Jim. Always great to be on your show. Thank you, Sean Tanu. Uh, once again, fantastic quarter. I look at it as marketing and commerce are on fire, much better than expected. Are these the kind of customers that are the $33.99 customers, the $79.95 customers? Are these big customers or small and medium? What's doing it? Well, Jim, we actually experienced growth across all three of our segments. And so when you looked at creative uh, cloud and the net new ARR that we got in that segment of the business, uh, that was a record for a Q3 uh, many years after the introduction of the product. Document Cloud had an exceedingly uh, strong quarter, and we're seeing tremendous adoption of our paper to digital uh, initiatives. And on the experience cloud, again, 34% uh, revenue growth, Every single enterprise needs to understand how you can engage digitally with customers. And I think what's unique about Adobe is this is every customer from a K through 12 student to an individual freelancer, all the way to the largest enterprises in the world. The breadth of our offerings and our customers is truly fueling this success. I'm now getting a feeling that if you're involved in anything creative at any university or even any high school, you have become the standard. That's it in America. Is that also becoming worldwide? Well, we've always talked, Jim, about uh, the fact that instead of just a focus on STEM, we love STEAM because the world without arts would be an exceedingly boring place. One of the things we actually did this quarter was we have a new ambassador network in educational institutions, to your point, and we're targeting over 100 colleges where these students are actually being the evangelists uh, for explaining why creative needs to be part of the curricula. So getting that younger generation excited about expressing themselves, we certainly believe uh, that that's going to fuel our growth. But in addition to that, as we come up on Max, which is the largest creativity conference in the world in November, I think what you're going to see from our innovation roadmap across new areas like immersive content, what's happening with gaming, what's happening across uh, devices that now have styluses. We announced a new product called Fresco for art and illustration. So the breadth of our products is amazing, but you're absolutely right. It's about getting these customers young and enabling them to tell their story. I don't know if people realize when you talk about a mid-30% growth, the average growth for a lot of the retailers I use, because you guys are in every bit of part of commerce, is not as strong as your growth, which means that you're both, I believe, taking share and also expanding the market. You're right, Jim. I mean, what is really unique right now about our digital experience solutions is that we have the first mile. And the first mile is content management, it's the web infrastructure, it's mobile applications that people use to engage with enterprises. And we have the last mile in commerce. That's the Magento acquisition that we did a while ago, uh, which enables you to make every experience shoppable. Uh, Magento had a great quarter. We grew that bookings 40% uh, year over year in Q3. And so I know uh, you talk a lot about uh, your rule of 40, Jim. Uh, we're blowing that away when you think about our growth rates as well as our margin. No, that's true. The other night we said you were the least expensive, high, uh, large cap growth stock. Now, I want people to understand how important the Adobe Max conference is in November. That has often been where you lay out the guidance for your coming fiscal year. There are a lot of people after the close today who are selling your stock because they're looking at the guidance you're giving us. I I have always felt that the guidance I care about is the November guidance. And if you're trading off this guidance, you may be missing an opportunity. I'm not saying you're doing anything that is being too conservative, but it has been this has been the quarter that you and I have been together where there are people who trade the stock instead of own it. That has been an unwise way to own Adobe, correct? 
Well, uh, we do look forward to the FA meeting, as you point out, Jim. That's when we lay out, you know, the growth opportunities ahead of us. We talked last year about how we had a greater than $100 billion addressable market opportunity. Uh, you know, we're growing the top line 20 percent. Our Q4 uh, targets show that revenue growth will be north of 20 percent with EPS growth accelerating even above that. So we're in rarefied atmosphere. We're focused on delivering an incredible innovation roadmap across all three of our clouds. And we look forward to sharing more about our forward-looking strategy uh, at the analyst meeting that you allude to at Max. The uh, one thing that we have to do, it's our last question, but the artificial intelligence component, you showed us it, it blew our minds away. How ingrained is it now into your commerce package? Well, uh, our artificial intelligence uh, framework is called Adobe Sensei, Jim, and it's embedded across every one of our products. Uh, it's when you look at a piece of content and say, how did they do that? There's probably an aspect of Adobe Sensei in that. The fact that we have hundreds of trillions of transactions that we're processing on behalf of our enterprise customers, and we can predict in real time. Uh, you've talked about the Adobe Digital Index, which talks about shopping patterns globally, that coming from Adobe Sensei. And so, you know, uh, it's a part and it's a fabric of all of our innovation, and we're excited uh, to unveil a new innovation soon. Well, well, congratulations. I think the people who trade the stock and not own it have been gravely mistaken, and they will do so once again. Shantanu Narayan, thank you so much. Chairman, President, CEO of Adobe. Good to see you, sir. Great to be uh, on your show, Jim. It's another great quarter. You want to dump it? I mean, come on. There's a huge November meeting. This was a terrific quarter. There's so much good ahead. And it's, as we did the other night, showed you, it's the least expensive high growth stock that we follow. Man, money's back in. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.